developments now and all these developments uh, out of Latin America. I want to bring in Eric Farnsworth. He worked on US policy for the region under the Clinton administration. Currently, he's vice president of the American Society and Council of the Americas. Eric, thank you very much for joining us. We've got so much to get through uh, for the next four minutes or so. Let's start, if I may, with uh, Kamala Harris, vice president's uh, visit uh, to Central America, to Guatemala, as well to Mexico. She's clearly under, I assume, under intense political pressure to try and stem the flow of migrants to the United States. So far, there hasn't <clears> been a, a clear strategy from the administration before she goes out there. Why not? Well, thanks for having me again, Issa. It's great to join you and your viewers once again. Uh, you know, these are some terribly complicated issues. I think the first thing to recognize is the fact that she is traveling to Mexico and Guatemala is an important statement by the administration of the importance that it's giving to these very uh, important issues and sending the vice president into really a complicated situation without uh, necessarily a hope of an immediate uh, solution here uh, is a recognition that in fact this is going to take some work, some real elbow grease, and that somebody with the uh, the seniority of the vice president is going to have to get engaged. A lot of this has to do with uh, getting the facts on the ground, what it's going to take in terms of uh, trying to get at the root causes. She's not coming with solutions because I don't think that there are necessarily solutions to be had, uh, rather management of a rather difficult issue that's frankly bedeviled the United States uh, for my entire career of 30 years on these issues of Republicans and Democrats alike. So this is a, a really a first step, uh, which I think we're gonna see come to fruition in coming days. Uh, but Eric, you know this region better than most. You know, the, uh, many previous governments have tried to tackle this. It's, I understand it's a fact-finding mission, but what are we expecting in the long term? What can uh, Vice President Kamala Harris do here? Are we talking about plowing more money into Guatemala or other countries? What exactly are, is she hoping, are we hoping to see from the United States here? Well, some money is going to be required. There's no doubt about that. Investment, job creation. Uh, your correspondent was talking about bringing hope to the people of the region. I think that's absolutely true. Better education, better health care, frankly, better security that uh, that uh, really is a problem throughout the Northern Triangle and parts of Central America. But the real answer here is that the United States cannot do this. This has to be uh, coming from the people of the region itself, from their own leadership. Uh, and the United States can certainly help. We can offer guidance and advice and money. Uh, and we can show, frankly, uh, that we won't accept certain behaviors in the context of corrupt activities or, or things that uh, really go against democratic practices and principles. But at the end of the day, and this is the reason why it's so challenging, the leadership and the people of the country have to do it themselves. Uh, it can't be forced on, on anybody, and that's not what the U.S. is trying to do anyway. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, trying to nudge and guide and, and offer incentives uh, so uh, this is something that uh, really uh, has, uh, has and will continue to be a challenge. Yeah, I, I'm sure it is. I mean, as you try to get to the root cause of migration uh, from Central America, as Matt, as our correspondent was saying, the root of it is often poverty and corruption. Uh, Guatemala, Matt was lying out, El Salvador, Honduras, even Guatemala facing, you know, there's corruption in all three countries, Guatemala facing corruption within its courts, judges who are under investigation. So how do you change that? How do you begin to change that within government? Yeah, and let's not forget Nicaragua, a little bit further yeah. south, not part of the Northern Triangle, but where the country is uh, under a democratic assault right now by, uh, or an assault on democracy by uh, Daniel Ortega. Uh, yeah, no, these are some intractable issues. There's no doubt about it. At the end of the day, you have one of the world's most impoverished parts of the world uh, with migrants trying to get to the world's richest economy with only Mexico in between. So there's going to be that natural pull no matter what uh, as people try to improve their lives. And we've seen that from migratory communities all around the world. Uh, but at the end of the day, there has to be hope for people who want to stay. And I believe the vast majority of Central Americans, frankly, do want to stay in their house, in their home. Uh, if, they, uh, if there are uh, security issues uh, that are challenging their families, if their uh, livelihoods have been wiped out by hurricanes, as they were in some cases at the end of last year, it makes those challenges all the more difficult. So from that perspective, there aren't easy answers here. I mean, we've been struggling with this for a long 
long time. Uh, but we have to have a better sense of what the possibilities are in the region. We have to have the leaders working more closely together, building economies of scale for their economies. Frankly, we have to have a better sense of uh, creating conditions that will draw investment, business conditions, uh, that so that people will want to invest in these countries to create the jobs that will mm. uh, compel some of the population to remain uh, in their own countries. So again, it's about pre providing hope. It's also about providing conditions that will uh, pr uh, provide incentives for people, frankly, to remain in their own homeland, which yeah. most people indeed probably want to do in the first place. Yeah, having Eric, having covered Venezuela at length, I can tell you the majority of people, if they could, they would stay at home if the opportunities were there Absolutely. and the conditions were there. Eric uh, Farnsworth, really appreciating the time to speak to us. Thanks, Eric. I want to go.